Good morning, Trio. I told Cherilette Blanco, I'm not great at quieting down a room, but you're an upper bound director, so I'm going to bring you up. And... All right. I can still hear voices. Can I have your attention? Thank you. You know your strengths and you know your weaknesses. So this has been a year of tremendous challenges. We know the financial outlook for our students and their families, as well as our professionals and our programs. And despite that, we're especially grateful that nine of our 10 regions met or exceeded their fair share of goals. We raised more than $220,000 in personal contributions. Every dollar of that matters. We know we all need to be paid more and times are tough. And so we're very thankful for every cent of that. At this time, we would like to recognize the efforts of our regions who completed their fair share of goals. Aspire, KOP, EOA, MAOP, NAOP, NEOA, SAOP, SWASAP, and WESTOP. So we're going to recognize your association's representatives. They're going to receive their region's award on your behalf. And each member of that association, would you please stand as your representative comes up to the front? So we're gonna start with Barney Nye of Aspire. <laughs> Tabiola. Castro of Chaos. <laughs> Chaos is the only region that brings flags to these events. I mean, <laughs> we got to see more flags in here. So, Cindy Verta of EOA. EOA is the Educational Opportunity Association. Nicholas Bedway of MIAP, the Mid-Eastern Association of Educational Opportunity Program Personnel. We have Jeff Garner of NEOP, the Northwest Association of Educational Opportunity Programs. <laughs> Deborah McCann from NEOA, the New England Educational Opportunity Association. This is the one event where you don't have to hold applause to the end. So, you know. um, Sharante Maxwell of SEOP, the Southeastern Association of Educational Opportunity Program Personnel. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Derricka Simon Baptiste from SWASAP, the Southwest Association of Student Assistance Programs. Armando Bustos, Jr. from Westop, the Western Association of Educational Opportunity Personnel. Please join me once again in applauding the contributions of these leaders, yourself, The hard work of Barney Na and Robert Pote. These are the co-chairs of our Resource Development Committee. Our, our COE staff who worked very hard to make this happen. Um, and all members of our TRIO community who's contributed to this effort. I would like to now ask Dr. Chris George to come to the stage. Thank you, Chair Givens. I would like to congratulate our conference chair, Stephanie Givens, and the conference committee for, rate, for achieving our goal and raising over $10,000 across our auctions, both silent and online, as well as our 50-50 raffle. Speaking of the 50-50 raffle, Steph is working diligently behind the curtain because we are about to make a drawing for over $1,500 for the 50-50 raffle. I'm, we are more than ready, Steph. So what is the grand total? <laughs> As she goes back. <laughs> Grand total is this, and our winner, I don't have a nickel or a 50 cent, so that's a half. The grand total is a new record, our second year, and we're growing, people. We have a raffle. We will split the pot for a uh, total. We totally in, took in $3,845, which means the winner is going to walk away with $1,000. $922. And we'd like to thank you for helping us uh, eclipse our goal of raising over $10,000 for all across all of our events. And at this time, we will ask our chair to reach his hand in. Hold on, dude. Let me get mine out first now. Hold on. Uh uh. <laughs> and you're not getting it, Al, if I win. <laughs> You know I ain't got my glasses on. Pick the right one, Joe. <laughs> I'm just mixing them up really good. All right. And the winner is ticket 048854. It was not Jen Rudolph who threw hers in the air. No way! Jeff is the winner. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Steph, Angie, and I have had a ball doing this. And next year, bigger and better, folks. <laughs> So lost in the silent auction, I forgot the rest of my script. <laughs> um, winners of the online auction will be contacted over the next few weeks. Hopefully all silent auction winners have picked up their items. If not, please reach out to Stephanie 
Angie Holly or myself, and we will help you with getting those and directions on how to pay if you want an online auction and do not have it. Thank you all again for your support. Jeff, I thought you were gonna spend your money on an urgent care visit for a second there. It's a little worry. Um, so I'd like to now ask Cervante Maxwell to come to the stage to announce the Amazing Race winners. How many participated in the Amazing Race? You had a good time. We saw some great pictures. You get to see DC. One time, me and Stephanie was doing the Amazing Race and we ran into Anna Kendrick. I'm not even joking. So you never know who you're gonna see doing this work. Good morning, all. Good morning and happy, happy Wednesday to everyone. Wow, it has been an amazing time and we had an amazing, amazing time um, with our wellness events. And then we also wanna really highlight our trio amazing race. It was back this year for the first time in a while. So we were extremely excited. The competition was fierce. We actually had eight teams participate this year. So I wanna give a shout out to all eight teams, better late than never the Disco Dynamos and their dad, Run to DMC, the Sundance Kids, Sunshine, and Team Awesome, Up Your Nose with the Rubber Hose Team, and last but not least, the Wild About Trio Team. So we can give all the teams a great a round of applause. So these teams completed these tasks all around the area, Washington DC area, and it was absolutely fantastic to watch the pictures and the feed that was coming in live as they were taking place. So it was a blast. Um, it was a tight race with only 50 points separating the winners. So if I can get a drum roll. Congratulations this year to our winners team run to DMC from SAYUP. That team consisted of Matt Donovan, Dr. T. Chris George, and Mr. Michael Maxwell. They have upheld and held on to their title. So we wanna say congratulations to the team. There was only one team missing, and that's our retiree, uh, Mr. Tom Rowland, but they still held it down for Tom. So thank you again. Thank you to Grace and Woody and all to the volunteers. Have a great day. So now I would like to ask the conference chair, Stephanie Givens, and the program chairs, Stephanie Cruz and Andrea Reeve, to join me at the podium. They're coming. How great was this conference this year? Let's give everyone a hand. That We had a president, an upper band alumnus president here. We had amazing uh, conference activities. The department ed was with us here all along. And we had a achievers dinner last night that didn't leave it a dry eye in the house. So, you know, um, thank you all so much. Okay, that's why, that's why I'm stalling. Um, but also, such an amazing conference. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you for your leadership and vision in organizing this conference. Andrea Reeve and Stephanie Cruz, our professional development offerings here were second to none. Thank you for your vision of our community's needs and this amazing program schedule that we have for him. Here's just a little token from our board to say thank you. We had two, two Stephanies on these envelopes, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your hard work. Everyone give them a round of applause.
So I'd like to invite Dr. T. Chris George back to the podium. You, got, you want to show, show those sneakers off, though. See? Here we go. All right. <laughs> Joe, what an incredible year. Uh, thank you for traveling this year to the numerous states, regional meetings, and encouraging all of us to encourage, be encouraged and informed advocates for TRIO despite the numerous challenges we faced. Through your leadership as board chair, you have provided strength when needed, compassion when required, and always there to jump in when needed, when help was needed. Additionally, you never let your duties as board chair interrupt your scholarship. You are soon to defend your thesis and allow us to congratulate you on your publication of your art history textbook just yesterday. The book is called Robert Williams Conversations. In recognition of your dedication and your unwavering enthusiasm, please accept a small token of appreciation and affection from us. And I don't see it. <laughs> Thank you again, Joe, for everything you've done. And I just want to say it's been an amazing two-year journey with you, and you, you did fantastic, bro. Yeah. And that book is available on Amazon in both paperback and hardback. And uh, Dr. Chris George, I want to thank you for all your leadership on this board. Uh, this is, you're kind of rolling off as past president. This is kind of the end, the bookend of, of your leadership. On this board, you brought us out of a pandemic and this organization is strong as it's ever been. And you were a huge contribution to that. Thank you so much. So I'd like to invite Dr. Ronnie Gross to the podium. Good morning, COE Nation. Morning. We will now proceed with the induction of our new officers. At this time, will the 2023-24 COE board officers please come to the stage. During the coming year, these individuals will serve as officers of COE, as, board, as chair of the board of directors, past chair of the board of directors, chair elect of the board of directors, secretary of the board of directors, and the treasurer of the board of directors, respectively. In meeting their responsibilities as spe specified in the council bylaws, these individuals will work to assure that COE fulfills its mission of advancing and defending the ideal of an equal educational opportunity in post-secondary higher education. They will provide a voice for low-income, first-generation, and disabled students to assure these students will have a realistic chance of entering and graduating from college. 
Yours is the task of carrying out the responsibilities of your office, of understanding the needs of low-income first-generation students with disabilities, and continuing to build the organization that effectively meets these needs. In recognition of your understanding of these responsibilities, I ask you to please repeat after me. We, the officers of the Council of Education of Opportunity and Education, acknowledge the honor and opportunity for service for service bestowed upon us. For service bestowed upon us. We pledge to carry out the duties of our offices and to strengthen the work of the council in order to expand post-secondary educational opportunity Please join me in extending support and appreciation up to this new team. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much, COE Nation. We will now hear from Sam Blanco III, COE's 2023-24 board chair, who will share his thoughts and plans for the upcoming year. First of all, Thank you for everyone who stayed. Uh, I know it's always a tough time to, to stay. You're on your way out. Some of you are flying out today in a couple hours, but sincere thank you from myself for staying around. So as I begin, I reflect on the number of years I've been in TRIO. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam Blanco III or SB3 from UCD, University of California, Davis. I direct three talent search programs and one upward bound. And I'm proud to say that I'm going into my 32nd year working in TRIO. <laughs> and before I forget, because I'm a very, very punctual person, that I wanna make sure that I give the a lot of time given to me and not go over. So trio, three, right? Trio, and that's me, SB3, trio. <laughs> SB3 from UCD, now COE. <laughs> so what I wanna do is in those three themes, past, present, and future. First of all, I wanna give thanks to my mom and dad who raised me, taught me on the small, small town of Delano, California. They were farm workers. My mom only went to the third grade. My dad went to the 12th grade. May, may SB2 continue to rest in peace. And my mom's back home in Delano. And knowing that, hopefully that they're very, very proud of this little boy from Delano, California, who was very shy, but good at math, standing in front of you, leading this nation of true professionals. You know, when I arrived here in Washington, D.C., seeing so many friends and family, I consider everyone here family. Three words, there we go, three, was always asked to me, are you ready? And I reply, yes, I am. Because of you. I am not here because of me. I am here because of all of you. Everyone who I learned from in the past year, 32 years, 31 years, 
that I've come across. Those who led our West Op region, our NorCal region, specifically Connie Baker, who I served on her board, Joy Britton, I've served on her board, and we went to Palau. Keith Horry, who was the first West Stop representative to serve as a COE chair. Jose Martinez Saldana, who served the second to be from West Stop. And two individuals who have, may they continue to rest in peace, my mentors, Nora Sanders out of Berkeley, and my really good dear friend, Irv Coyne, Mr. Coyne from Arizona State University, who when I became West Op president, the very first day, July 1st, 2018, he called me and he said, Sam, I'm very proud of you. You're gonna do great. June 30th of that next year, when my last day, he called me again and said, Sam, thank you for a great year. And then when he learned that I became CUE chair before he passed, he called me and he was so proud. And I told him every single time I, I talked to him, I said, thank you for your leadership. I'm here because of you. And may he re continue to rest in peace. And again, to everyone I have come across throughout these past 31 years that have given me great support and influence to become a leader today. So, as, as you can tell, I'm, I get very emotional because that's what we are in TRIO, right? We love our students, we love our families. And I wanna thank, publicly thank, as I get this spotlight and I'm gonna take advantage of it, is to thank every single one of you who have come up to me and asked me how my sister was. So my sister is battling cancer and I wasn't gonna come to this conference at first because she was gonna go into surgery. And she told me how proud she was of her little brother. As I walk through the halls, those of you who come up to me and give me a hug and said prayers to Rosie, energy. And I relayed that message to her. She had her surgery, everything went well. She's doing good. And I really believe in the energy and positiveness that everyone has sent to her in Bakersfield and McFarland, and now she's at USC. So again, thanking those of the past and the present, all of my COE family, the board, and I have the, opportunity, the great opportunity to be in this transition as we honored Maureen Hoyler for her 42 years for COE, and as the new president, Kim Jones, comes into her new role, and I get to be the chair of this great, great organization. So again, thank you, Maureen, and also Arno Mitchum, from all the years that I've learned about the 12-day war, about all the wars, all the struggles that we've had to ensure that our students are being supported. So again, thank you so much, and I, and I really look forward to working with President Jones. So what I wanna focus this year is a few things. And again, I just wanna highlight them because I know it's, it's, I only have three minutes and 30 seconds left. Again, I'm a mathematician. Is I wanna work with the small rural, focus on the small rural programs and the Native American tribes and communities especially those who are, who are not able to, to, to do extra funds for, 
for trainings and memberships. Again, I want to focus on those as well. And especially my PI chapter in West Stop, Guam, Palau, and my good friend, my good friend, Yoich Ringel. Make sure he, he knows that I mentioned him because if, I, if you don't, he's gonna get mad at me. And, and, and also his, his, his uh, President of Palau, uh, President Whips for, for attending. And again, also making sure we document the history of COE and TRIO uh, now that we have this transition and making sure we do that. Also, the different states that are dealing with the DEI, diversity, e e e equity and inclusion, making sure that our students feel welcome of any type of background or LGBTQIA to ensure that our students are feeling welcome in those cities and states. I wanna make sure and focus on that. And finally, in my focus, again, these are only the, the, the hot topics, right? I'm gonna do a lot of other stuff, but is, is the mentoring. Please raise your hand if you've been in TRIO less than five years. Less than five years. Okay. All right, thank you. Raise your hand if you've been in TRIO more than 20. That was almost equal. So what I wanna do is focus on making sure that those seasoned veterans work with those younger professionals and keep them and make sure they get involved in leadership roles and positions. I'm looking forward to the traveling and visiting the 10 regions and meeting with the 10 presidents and meeting the new 10 elects. So as I finish my last one minute, I wanna share a quick story with you that sums up who I am and what I do. Being a first generation college graduate, when I was a senior at UC Davis back in the spring of 1992, I was studying for my finals and I called my dad because we didn't have email or texting back then. I called my dad and said, hey dad, I'm finishing up, I'm graduating on June 20th, 1992, I'll never forget the date. Now it's SB2, my dad. And he was living in Corpus Christi, Texas at the time where my two parents are from, more specifically Robstown and Alice, Texas. And I told him, it's okay if you can't make the graduation. I understand, flights are expensive, it's a long drive. So I'm studying for my final, my last final. And in the apartment, I hear a, a knock. I open the door and it's my dad. He drove 2,000 miles, almost 2,000 miles to see me graduate. And at the graduation, afterwards, you know, it's a large graduation. I'm out. Uh, he's the first one I see. And as I, grad as I congratulate, he congratulates me, hug, gives me a hug. I said, Dad, thank you so much for driving 2,000 miles. True story, his, his reply to me was, I would have walked. <laughs> and as I serve as your 2023-24 chair, I promise to walk for you I promise to walk for your students. I promise to make sure that your voice is heard nationally, making sure with Congress that we get our money and make sure that our students are graduating from college. I am really humbled and proud to serve as your chair for this upcoming year. And those who know me, I mean what I say and say what I mean. I will walk the walk and I will walk for your students and for you. Thank you so much.
All right. And I, also, again, I want to thank Ronnie Gross for for uh, installing us as a group. And I would uh, again also thank uh, Chris George for your phone call to bring me back to the board a couple years ago. I really appreciate it. And thank you. And I want to again thank Joe Givens for always answering my texts, always answering my phone calls and the support. And I look forward to also working with Mara as she is going to be our upcoming chair next year. Sam, on behalf of the board, <laughs> you know, when you uh, give these heartfelt speeches, your mind, you know, you go into your own place. Sam, on, on behalf of the board, we ask that you um, accept the gavel as a symbol of your leadership in the coming year. We know that you will use it wisely. Sam, thank you for sharing your plans with us. We hope you've enjoyed Sam. <laughs> I'm off script here. Sorry. I'm kind of emotional because I'm just so proud of, of this guy. And uh, I'm losing my poise. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for sharing your plans with us. We know that you're gonna do a great job here. Again, thank you to Dr. George for the work that you've done. Thank you for all the board and the COE staff. So before we move on to the last goodbye, let's give all the COE staff a hand for this time. Let's give all the hotel staff a hand. Man, it takes a lot of work to put these things on, and we thank all those working behind the scenes. So, we hope you enjoyed your time here in DC. I know I had a blast. Whether you're here in person with us or virtually, we hope you, our virtual friends, enjoy this as well. So this is gonna be bye for now, but we're gonna see each other very soon at our next convenings at the 40, 43rd Annual Policy Seminar, March 17th through 20th, 2024, back here in Washington, D.C. We'll see those who can't make it to that at the 43rd Annual Conference, September 8th through the 11th, 2024, in New York City. I hope you all have safe travels and get home and get rest and are there for your students when they need you. Thank you so much. This officially concludes our conference.